Hi, this is Cheryl. Uh, welcome to my uh, channel. And in this video, I decided I was going to do a little bit of experimenting. And I like to try to find ways to combine all the different uh, media that I like to do into different um, projects. So in this project, I'm going to be making art pendants um, using the Tiffany stained glass method. But I'm going to be combining um, many different um, things that I, I like to do. I'm going to be using one by three inch microscope slides and I've separated out some watercolor paper. Actually, this is mixed media paper that's good for watercolor and painting. And I did one by three inch lines and I'm going to start off with watercolor. And I have my Jane Davenport colors here and I'm just putting my little palettes back where they belong. And then I'm going to um, start working on the backgrounds of my little art paintings. Now this is an experiment, so I'm not going into super fine detail on these art pendants. Uh, I just want to see how this project is going to work out. So you'll be experimenting along with me uh, as you watch. So we'll see if this works out for us. And if it does, I will try doing some more intricate paintings and creating some unique art pendants for my shop. Um, so what I've got here is a one inch brush, one inch flat brush. I've got a round, I don't know what size it is, and a, and a flat, which I don't think I even used in this video. Um, and a glass of water. And I taped down my media paper with some um, washi tape. And you can use um, any washi tape that you have. And it's pretty cheap to use. And it just keeps your paper flat from curling and rippling when you're doing watercolor. So I'm taking my big one inch flat brush and I'm wetting it down. And just damping it um, because I want to do some, uh, put some colors in and have them blend and uh, make a unique background for my little art paintings that I'm going to do for these pendants. So I have my um, paper wetted in the top section. I have um, different sections, which I'll probably do differently, each one. And I'm just going to start applying paint colors that I like that would blend well together and in no particular um, pattern or reason. I'm just adding paint color to the already wet and moistened um, media paper and adding a little more water as I need it um, to let the paint flow and do its own thing. I've never done this before, so it's going to be um, a trial and see if I like the results that I get. I'm using a little uh, teal green with some baby blue and letting it mix and blend. And you can do the backgrounds any which way you want, uh, you know, pencil work, any, any kind of um, art on the, on the paper would be fine. Uh, I'm just trying to incorporate the things that I like to do, which is watercolor. Um, I like to use my one-shot enamels, which I do pinstriping and one-stroke um, flowers. 
And um, so that's what I'm doing with mine. So as you see, I'm blending my paints out. I'm letting them flow the way they want, adding color where I need it, and staying within the lines of these particular pendant panels. And I love trying to do different things. So this is right up my alley, a little experiment. And my paper decided to lift up on that one little corner. So I put some more washi tape down. So in this particular um, pan, uh, setup, this section, I'm going to have regular speed, but then I'm going to go fast forward through the rest so that we this video isn't super long. It's a long. It's a 51 minute video right now because there's a lot to to cover. So after this section, you can even fast forward through if you don't want to see me paint the other panels. So I'm giving it a squirt of water to help the paints blend and flower and do what they want to do. And then um, I'm going to take some, um, it's a little squirt bottle and I'm squirting some water. So now I'm taking um, some sea salt and I'm sprinkling it over my dampened, moistened background with all the colors. And the sea salt will absorb some of the pigment and give it a textured effect after it's dried. So, um, yeah, I'm just going for a, a background now. Um, this is this is just um, the first stage of the painting, and I'll be letting that dry overnight. So we'll be fast forwarding through all of the rest of this. Uh, I'll be using different colors, and if you want to see um, the process again and fast forward, you can just continue watching. Otherwise, you can fast forward through the video to the next uh, step. And here I'm using a bright yellow and a green. Again, spraying it with some water and some salt. And I specifically stayed away from the green segment so that it wouldn't um, blend with it. But as you'll see, I'm using the teal at the top and the yellow at the bottom on this next segment. So I don't have to worry about the paint running.
And the very bottom segment um, with the pink um, was off camera, so I just cut that part out. I'm dotting in some blue, letting it run. Putting in some pink. And some water, again, letting the paint do its own, whatever it wants to do. Okay, so now we're slowing down the video again, and I'm getting ready to um, actually let this dry. And we'll come back after it's all dry, and you'll see the texture that the salt um, did on the paper. So it gave it kind of like a sanded look to it. So now I'm going to use some pinstriping paint. I'm using the One Shot Enamel paint in the orange, and I believe I use blue. Um, and I'm taking a liner brush because it's small work. And I'm going to do some striping. And I'll take my time, the, the video will be at normal pace for the first one, and then we'll fast forward through the following um, paintings. And again, your art could be anything you like to do on these um, little art pendants. Taking my time, making sure my two sides are even. Doing nice brush strokes. So this is the first time I've used this paint on this media paper. And this design is not planned out. It's just paint as you go. Now when you're painting these designs on these little one by three inch panels, you need to keep in mind that when you start to do the Tiffany stained glass method, um, there's a piece of glass that goes on top and a piece of glass that goes on the bottom. And you need a at least a one eighth inch um, border around your design because the um, the copper foil tape and the um, solder uh, needs that space to uh, 
join the two glass pieces of glass together. So now we're going to for, uh, fast forward through the rest of this because um, it's pretty boring to just watch me paint the lines. And every one is different. You just kind of paint as you go, enjoying the process. background and these look kind of look like a um, little tie-dye effect there going on. I believe the last two I did with um, kind of a one stroke flowers. And I go back and I do a second color, which is the blue, the light blue. Just accenting the pattern that I've already got down.
and I'm going to use the emerald green and I'm going to do the petals and the stems for the flowers on the last two. Very simple, easy, and quick. I'm just putting in a little bit of white accents on my flowers. And then we'll be going back down to normal speed to cover the next process. So this is the next step. So I'm cutting apart my, my pieces of art, artwork for my individual pendants. And here are all my little art pieces. I didn't finish the last panel. Um, put that aside and do that another time. So with my Posca paints, they're little um, acrylic markers. I did little flowers, and little butterflies, and um, did the remaining artworks there. And just doodled a couple of cute little pieces there little abstract flower scene there and just this because this is an experiment and I foiled this one so you see there's a foil that goes a copper foil that goes around the one inch by three inch um, pendant piece so we'll go through the steps to um, do that yeah, and those are my pieces that I did not finish. So I'm cutting them apart and I'll do something on them um, later if I like the results of this project. And we'll be moving on to foiling. This is a Tiffany method, which is a stained glass method of putting glass um, in um, lead. Of course, this is jewelry, so we're going to be using um, lead-free solder. So I have 5 16 inch copper foil tape. And we will put away the paints and pull out the stain, the uh, slides. So these are microscope slides that you can get in any science store, or teacher's store, medical slides. They're very delicate. Um, but once you double them up, they're nice and firm. You don't have to worry about them breaking. So as you see, we put a piece of glass on the top. And I just need to finesse and figure out exactly where I want my painting to be situated under the glass. And then I trim it off. where I want it. Now keeping in mind that there's going to be some about an eighth inch tape line going around the entire pendant on the face of it. 
So some of my pattern will be hidden by the foil tape. So then you put the bottom piece of glass on the back. Now, of course, I've signed every one of these with my artist signature on the back of it. And you want to make sure you start with at least um, a quarter inch, um, which is going to be overlapped on one side or the bottom. And you want to, to place it in the exact middle of the foil. And you're going to go around the, I find the best thing is to go around the entire piece. I had a little paper sticking out and I wanted to trim that off before I foil it. So in the exact middle of the foil, you place the two slides of glass and the paper. keeping everything in line and putting the foil tape on the edges. I haven't folded it over yet. I'm just going to go around the entire piece. And overlap that quarter inch and lining them up to match exactly so there's no um, you don't see any overlaps of the seam and cut that off Okay, so now what I want to do is I want to pinch the sides in. I'm fixing the foil tape. I want to make sure that it's lined up with the, the first piece. Okay. So now I want to pinch the sides in, but I want to make sure that I fold the corners in. Um, and what I do is I pinch along the entire side, pushing up into kind of making an envelope fold. So we have a nice, uh, neat fold at the top and the bottom of the pendant. And then pinch down the top. Well, in this case, it was the bottom. And now I'm doing the same thing to the top. And then pinching down the top. So you have little envelope folds at the corners. So taking a wooden stick or a dowel, in this case, I'm using a clay tool that I never used for clay. And it's the perfect tool for this. And I'm burnishing the copper to the glass, making sure it's nice and smooth. And I do that on all four sides in the front before I do anything with the corners. So I'm burnishing the copper down, making sure it's, ni it's nicely stuck to the front of the glass. And I do that on all four sides. And then on the back, on all four sides again. And then I attach, uh, I, I smooth out my corners in the direction that they're folded. Just to make sure that they're nice and smooth, as smooth as they can be. So 
See, it's my clay stick. And it works perfect for this. Okay, so now I take my wooden dowel and I go along the sides of the pendant, smoothing it out, making sure it's good and stuck. On all four sides. And I do the same process with all of these um, for my little pendants I actually cut the glass in half and that's a whole different process I don't know if I um, I didn't show you how to cut the glass in this video um, so now what I need to do is I need to solder them so you need to use flux in this case I'm using a liquid flux and um, painting it on. You don't need a whole lot. It cleans the copper and ha and allows the solder to flow. And because this is a necklace um, or a, a pendant that's going to be worn on person, this is um, lead free solder. And I'm using my soldering gun has an adjustable temperature gauge on it and I'm using it at 360. Um, which seems to work pretty well with the lead-free solder. So here I'm just applying solder along the back edge of the pendant along the copper lines. And the key is to just keep your hand steady and let the uh, solder flow. And if you don't like how it looks in the first run, you can always go back and smooth it out. But I find that a light touch is what's required in a steady hand. So be careful, it gets very hot very quickly um, so I have a little plastic clamp that I got at Harbor Freight. They come in a package of six or eight or something like that. And they're not very expensive, but they do the trick. And then I can hold the pendant without getting burnt. So I turned it over. I'm going to do the same thing to the front. First, you apply your flux. If you find that your, um solder is not flowing it's because you probably forgot to put flux on and don't forget to clean your soldering gun because if the you find that the solder is not sticking to your soldering tool um, it's because it's the tip is dirty and sometimes I have to I retin it with some t t uh, tip tinner to keep it um, working and flowing properly. I find that this process is very meditative. Um, it's, it gets your mind in another area and it's just very relaxing. And again, if you don't like the way that it looks on the first go, just go back and go over it with the iron again and it will 
you can smooth it out. It takes a couple of them. As you can see, I did a couple of them sitting there before I did this video because I've never done this before. So this is um, new for me as well. So um, if I can do it, you can do it. So now I need to apply the solder to the edges of the pendant. And I find, find that the trick with this is to make sure that you have your piece um, perpendicular up and down and let gravity give you a nice beaded edge and let it harden before you move it. Otherwise it may drip or drip down the sides. If you have too much, it probably will drip down the sides as well. Um, so with practice, you'll figure out how much solder you need. Um, some people apply little beads of solder along the edge and then smooth it out. That works too. Either way, it works nicely. Um, you can see I'm going over it again and I'm just very lightly letting the, letting the flow of the solder um, dictate how I move. Um, it just, it has like a bead that you just let it flow right off the soldering iron. And that gives you a nice smooth edge. Turning it over so I can get the last side but it's hot and I don't want to burn myself. And make sure you put flux on. And doing the same thing. Okay, so I think that piece is put together. The only thing we have left to do now is to put a hanger on it. See, I just didn't like it and I just smoothed over. And So that piece is now ready for a hanger. Okay. So I've got a little piece of 20 gauge copper that I made a, a ring with around those pliers. And I'm going to apply it to the little um, abstract flower art pendant. <laughs> Putting some flux on both pieces and lining it up where I want it to go. And this is only the second one that I've done. You see in the corner I have one done. I practiced before I videoed this. Um, but this is this is just the second one I've ever done like this. So if I can do it, you can do it. So what you want to do is you want to put a little bit of solder um, where the two pieces are joining just to tack it there. 
And then um, because the wire is above the edge of the pendant, I like to build up a little bit of solder to hide the, the two end pieces of the um, hanger. So it's a little bit thicker there. And then I like to um, put a little bit of solder around both sides to make it strong. And since my copper wire has been um, treated with flux, I also put a coat of the um, solder on the loop of the wire so that it blends in with the rest of the pendant and it's not copper color. So I just made a loop in front of you with the round nose pliers for the next one. Doing the same thing, putting a few drops of solder there to tack it in place. See, I was able to pick up that little piece of solder that dripped down on the counter. If you find that your iron is not um, allowing you to gather the solder on it, then you need to clean it. Applying the solder on the on the uh, loop. And then you have to do the back. Pulling out some more solder. It's easy to work with it on the table like this. So it wasn't flowing for me. I had to clean my iron. And I'm going to use the tip tenner, which helps promote the flowing. If you don't like how your pendant looks with the solder, just go back over it with and reheat it and smooth it out. 
The tricky part is to not heat it up so much that the um, actual um, hook falls off on you. And you also want enough solder to cover the ends of it so it looks like um, one piece. So if you get too much solder on the pendant, you can always heat it and let it drip, drip off and then smooth everything out again. You see how that I, I pull the soldering iron off the edge? That's so as to not to um, end up with a line. It kind of flows when you better when you do that. So I have to do the back of this next pendant. And then the rest of them will all be um, fast forward through. And after this, um, we need to clean them. I'm tinning, what they call it tinning, the copper. Now these pendants will need a jump ring. Okay, so we'll fast forward now. So hey, if you like this video, please hit the like button. And if you want to see more of my videos, I'd encourage you to hit the subscribe button. Love to have you join me on my art journey and my experiments. And I'm always trying something new and different. And um, I'd like to, to have you join me. Um, so after we get done putting all of the um, attachments, the loops on the pendants, they do need to be cleaned because um, there's a there's flux residue on them. So what I used was um, just a, a, a sponge and I used a little bit of Dawn soap and I scrubbed them. Um, I didn't soak them in water. I just kind of scrubbed them with the soap and water and rinsed them right under the faucet. And I didn't have any problems with water or anything getting into my artwork. So then the next process will be to add some patina to a few of these and see what we like. So here they are um, with their little attachments and all set up. So join me on the next video. I'll be patinaing a few of these and we'll see whether we like the black patina or the natural silver of the, the um, solder. So check it out. Thanks. Bye.